Hello, hello, welcome back to Pokemon Unbound. Uh, I got a few levels on my Pokemon. And a few moves. Uh, everybody's a little bit up higher than level 30. Runs are getting closer to level 30. I also swapped some items around. Let me just show that really quick. Uh, Lax and Sense on Bronzor. And I now have the moves Rock Tomb, which I purchased at the Mart. I did actually purchase it. And yes, it has been buffed quite nicely. I went from 55 power and 85 accuracy to 60 power and 95 accuracy. Uh, so since it has a higher accuracy, I decided, yeah, okay, I'm going to actually buy it, use it. Not really sure if I can get any benefit from lowering my opponent's speed because Gyro Ball does more damage if I'm slower. Um, but if I do lower speed enough, then while I'm weakening Gyro Ball, I do get the higher chance to make my opponent flinch if I happen to be faster. I also happen to give Vanillish Icy Rock, which I can show where I found that. I didn't record me picking that up. I just happened to find it and... There it was. Um, but what that does is it increases the uh, hail that's used in battle. Instead of, I think, two to five turns, it guarantees seven turns. I'm not exactly sure how the mechanic is implemented here. Uh, it was changed a couple times since it was implemented in Gen 4. I think is when the Icy Rock was implemented. Uh, so I'll get a longer chance of hail for Ice Body, and I I'm not sure if it powers up Ice-type moves. I actually don't even know if that does normally. I know it guarantees accuracy for Blizzard, but I don't think... I don't actually know if it powers up Ice-type moves. I know Sandstorm I doesn't hit Rock, Ground, and Steel-types, and it didn't power up Rock-type moves until, like, Gen 5, I think. So it... it you know, things have changed <laughs> over the years. Uh, in the 25-plus years since Pokemon first came out. Uh, I got the Mystic Water on Azumarill, took it off of, was it Duat? Yeah, and gave the Black Belt to Duat because it has Revenge. Um, give that a little bit more power to it. Litleo, I don't think I changed anything with you. Still got the Safety Goggles, which has been pretty nice in this hail. Uh, I don't take damage every turn from hail when I have Safety Goggles. Nothing's really changed here. Um, I think Fire Fang, has that changed... This says 65. So I've noticed something. 60. Interesting. Okay. So when you press L in battle and you uh, see the power of moves, it apparently takes the same type of attack bonus into effect because it shows uh, Incinerate as 75 and Fire Fang as 81. I thought maybe that got buffed or something. Uh, Aerial Ace, I taught to Gabite. Got rid of Slash. I was going to get rid of Metal Claw, but I don't know if I can learn Steel Wing or if I can even get that as a TM. It's better than Metal Claw, in my opinion. Uh, I got rid of Slash, which has a high critical hit ratio. I lowered accuracy, but... Or I lowered my power, but gained accuracy and a little bit of extra type coverage. Uh, Metal Claw does raise my attack, so that is also kind of a plus to keeping that move. And nothing's really changed here. Except I gave it the Black Belt. But, we have just got three badges, and we are supposed to head up to the KBT Expressway. But first, I got a show. I uh, picked up an item from in here. This guy here. Have a Pokemon that can still evolve, hold an Eviolite in battle to increase his defenses. Uh, he gave me an Eviolite. All you gotta do is show him a Pokemon that can still evolve, which I showed him my Bronzor. Um, I believe Eviolite just doubles your defense, which actually is pretty good for Bronzor, but I, I don't think I'm gonna use that. It. It, it's cool, but I don't have a use for it. Also, if I were to just talk to this guy in the Pokemon Center, First thing he says is Alice, the gym leader, likes to use flying type Pokemon. I know it's not what you'd expect from a gym up here. I kind of had it upon myself to just not talk to people. I guess I should probably do that. This lady here. Have you ever heard of Ayla? She's the one responsible for bringing Bill's PC to Boreas. Thanks to her, we can store our Pokemon somewhere. 
I don't know if it said someone's PC before or not, but I checked after talking to her and it does in fact say Ayla's PC. But enough messing around. Let's head up to the little ice cave that's now available to us and apparently head south by heading north. I didn't learn from my mistake last time, so let's try this again. Oh, you're somebody. Hello, Alice. Ah, Ace. Good of you to drop by. You ever heard of heard the saying my grandmother used to be fond of. If humans were meant to fly, we'd have wings like a Gligar and feathers like a Pidgeotto. Well, I'm pretty sure I got the first part down, but I might need a little help for the second. If you have any time today, would you be willing to help Nice Lady out? Sure. Ah, excellent. Let me explain what the problem is. Uh, I need the feathers necessary to finish the wings I've been working on. Thanks, Morning Voice, for kicking in right when I'm trying to read things. But not just any feathers will do, I need pretty wings, 20 of them to be exact. I mean, I could use other wings, but a, but a lady's got to have nice things, right? So if you could fetch me 20 of those pretty wings and bring them here, there'll be something nice in it for you too. You can find pretty wings being carried by Wild Single, or by Wild Wingle and Wild Pelipper. If you have a Pokemon with Thief, Covet, or Knockoff, getting those pretty wings will be a lot easier. I recommend Knockoff the most because it saves you having to take the item from your Pokemon. Oh, that's actually kind of nifty hint. I don't think that's kind of widely known as like a tip to getting items from Pokemon is to use the move knockoff instead. Also, a Pokemon with compound eyes or super luck at the front of your po of your party increases the odds of a lot of Pokemon holding items, so keep that in mind. Are people meant to fly? Don't know. Steal wings from birds to find out. Interesting mission. I still don't understand how to get to the I uh, ice cave. I think I'm supposed to go the other direction up here. Aha. Found it. Bop and music. We're back to using multiple stairs to get to a location. Highly unnecessary. I always thought that was stupid in Fire Red and Leaf Green for Naval Rock. It's a uh, events exclusive location the it's where you get ho -Oh and lugia and the uh floors to get to the top of the mountain and to the basement of the cave or whatever it is it's like five floors for the basement and like 20 floors to get up to the top of the mountain is stupid i forgot that you can find pokemon in rock smash rocks and it happened to be a nose pass that immediately tried to paralyze me. Took care of that. Sign. Frozen Heights or Crater Town or Blizzard City. Uh, I don't think I want to be going that way. Wait, I want to go south. I just cleared this rock. What? Okay. Apparently, if they go off screen, they reappear. I don't know how that works, and apparently you can find a wild Pokemon down here, too. I might have had it repelled the last time I was down here. Let me pull one up really quick. Hey, I picked up a Castilia cone. I talked to that snowboarder dude that's right outside the city. I actually thought that he was a trainer that didn't see me the first time. Nope, he just welcomes everybody to the city with an ice cream cone. How nifty. Can I smash these? No. So Rock Smash does not break those. I guess you have to actually use Dig. Okay, so I clearly don't know where I'm going. That just let me through. Hmm. I guess this counts as technically a new area. I don't know. I don't know how, uh, if this is actually going to take me directly to the spot. If this will actually take me all the way to where I'm supposed to be going. But it said to head south in the expressway, so I shall do that again. Well, I'm at Crater Town. Do I head south from here? I remember that there was a little cutscene down here. Back to the expressway. Crater Town, Tell Town, Fall Shore City, Epitome Town. I, I think I want to go to Fall Shore. Is what I was saying in the little tips in the start menu. 
All these people in here just want to teach moves for gems, but I don't understand how to get the gems. Nobody's said anything about obtaining these gems. This guy is moving. You're also just wanting to teach gems. Or teach moves for gems. But you don't explain how I supposedly get these gems. Fall short city? Here we are. Nope. Star Raptor, use aerial ace. Tell me how to get past the barrier on Route 9. I don't have time to deal with these shadows. And why should I? If you think a simple surprise attack on me is enough to remove it, you're sorely mistaken. You say the attempts to play hero are tiring. Alakazam, get rid of him. Turn him into Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk over here. My body won't do as it's sold. Good work. Return Alakazam. See, that's, that's kind of the flaw within the Pokemon series games is why don't the enemy teams just use the Pokemon on the people? They would get so much further with whatever their goals are. Now that's been taken care of, I better get back to Route 9. Sure, just leave the witness who is clearly watching the entire thing. Boreas's Underground Highway. I've been there. Hi, welcome back. Yeah, that shadow admin really ticks me off. There has to be somewhere, some way onto Route 9. Ace. Uh, I hope you didn't, you know, see that. Bro, I was standing literally right behind you. Well, I was just caught off guard. Uh, never mind. Listen, I need to ask you a favor. A war. I know my grandpa asked you to head to Th the Thundercat Mountain, but before you do, would you mind lending me a hand first? See, the shadows put up some sort of invisible barrier around the route I was trying to fly to. I need help either taking it down or finding another way onto Route 9. Do you think you could spare a moment to do that? I mean, I suppose I was just going to go heal, but I could help you. Thanks, I appreciate it. I'm going to try to find some way onto Route 9 from Telltown. You should probably try something similar. Oh, you'll need to take Route 10 to get to Overture to Telltown. There's a lot of T's in this sentence. You'll need to take Route 10. I hope my pop filter works. To get to over to Telltown. So this could help you get there quickly. I mean, if you could hand me a couple more, that'd be great too, but... Alright. Let's go, Star Raptor. I am going to heal. There's a lot of items I can see on the screen that I don't know if I can get to all of them. How do I... What? Is this one of those things where you can actually walk behind the building, but it looks like you can't? Of course it is. It's a hard scale. Now normally, you can give these to collectors that can teach your Pokemon moves that they've forgotten, which is pretty useful, but I don't know if that's actually in Fire Red and Leaf Green. As far as I know, that's a Mushroom Tutor. I don't know what the hard scales are used for. First things first, gotta get myself healed up. Second thing second, I gotta see if there's anything interesting for sale. The guy's missing. But I could probably top up on some repels and potions, so let me do just that. Well, after buying Rock Tomb and a couple of repels, I decided to buy a revive. That's not the right menu. And I'm only at $114, so I guess I'm probably stuck not being able to buy any TMs for a while. However, these houses look interesting. Mission HQ, come get your next job. That's not. Inverse Battle House. Enjoy backwards battles. I don't even think I want to know. Uh, if I remember correctly, in Gen 5 it was? I might be thinking of something else. They were battles that were just highly gimmicking. They weren't all that interesting, in my opinion. Now, according to the map, we're supposed to be going over here to the side. Route 10. There's just a giant wall. Where am I supposed to be going? 
Oh, never mind. What is this? A tree? It's a very unique tree that's out in the middle of nowhere. It's seemingly... It, it, it feels like it's... Oh, I guess there's several of them. I don't know. I feel like something I should be able to talk to. Like it's supposed to come out and attack me or something. Route 10. Autumn River. Telltown and Auburn Waterway, which I saw earlier. I remember seeing that. And Fall Shore City, which I just came from. I hope there's nothing important in Fall Shore, because I just left the area without really doing anything there. Anything unique? There's an item. A quick ball. I think it's got a times four catch rate at the start of a battle. After that, it's just a regular times one. There's a dude all by his lonesome. Uh, you're gonna die alone down there, buddy. Sorry. That's not something special. Okay. Is there an item up here? There is a TM. And the TM is TM54 Fault Swipe. Pretty useful if you want to catch Pokemon. Always leaving the opponent at 1 HP. Trainer tips. Hop on the rocks to cross over the water. Yeah, but there's a guy here and I could do with some experience, so let me do that. It's always raining here. Why is it always raining here? It's a land of rain. They kind of jump in a little bit. Kind of show off how awesome this little feature is. Pressing L on these moves, you know, shows the power. Accuracy, no miss. It's a contact move. For Gyro Ball, it actually automatically calculates how much power it's going to have. I just have my speed lowered. It went from 36 to 59. I... It's actually kind of interesting, so if my speed lowers again, that number should go up. Which, my speed did lower. This might even one-shot. Or not. I think I got like a critical hit or something last time, because it took like half their health. But yep, now it shows 80 power. Just thought that was kind of interesting. You know, I like Bronzor, and I like Bronzong, but this nature is so detrimental to me. <laughs> it's very hard to deal any damage, especially when my moves, my most powerful move that I have is extra sensory, and it's a special move. I can't really deal any damage with it. It's like I'm dealing seven damage, and his Pokemon are especially designed for the rain, having the ability rain dish, for example. So I deal 7 damage, and then he takes 5 damage, or he heals up 5 damage, so I'm really not chipping away very much. Meanwhile, Bubble Beam takes up half my health each time. Hey, guy. That cave over there, what do you suppose is in it? A body. Don't go in there. Hacker Dudley. You know, I don't have any grass or water type moves. But a gyro ball is pretty nice. 53 power. Why does everything have rock slide? Yeah, I didn't think that was going to do very much either. Onyx is very defensive, so that's not necessarily Bronzor's fault. But I am going to switch nonetheless. Take advantage of the rain, go for some bubble beam action here. Actually, I think he's got more than one Pokemon, so let me go for Aqua Ring first. Of course, Rock Slide. Please don't flinch me. Thank you. And bubble beam. Assuming I don't flinch. Okay. And down goes Onyx. What's next? Drill Burr. Uh, I think I'm fine staying in. 
He's got two other Pokemon. I thought he just had one more. All right, then. And now he's going for Sandstorm. Even without the boost from the rain, still a one shot. I'm gonna take some damage from the sand in a second here. Take six damage and I heal it right back up. Going for Aron. I. I'll just go for a Gabite, go for Bulldoze. Times four, super effective, always good to use. A ground type move that is. It's also times for a week to fighting. And yet it's still pretty much a powerhouse of a Pokemon. Speed fell. Going for Iron Head, that's a very good move. Always glad to see when that's implemented in a game. I mean You're literally one HP, so. I bet scary strong Pokemon live there. Mm-hmm. They're feeding on the dead body. Were you listening? Another trainer tip sign that you can't read from the side. Pressing select will let you reuse one of up to six registered items. To register an item, select it in the key item sector of your cube and choose register. Choose register. The item registered second can be quickly can be used quickly by pressing L when the L button mode option is set to register item two. So you can have up to six in your menu. I can remember which button is mapped to my select. Interesting, I thought that you could only have two because it had the register item two option. Did that make sense? I guess I can get to this item. Unless I go from the other side somehow. I can just bypass you. I assume that you're a trainer. Stop right there. I want to paint this perfect moment. I'm creeped out. You know, I should have learned the last time I fought a painter guy, but I should never talk to them. They just have Smeargle on the team. And while Smeargle isn't particularly strong, it can learn literally any move in the game. I think literally. Uh, there might be like one or two exceptions. But it uses the move sketch to basically rewrite the move sketch into a different move, the last move that was used against it. So, in theory, you can have the most ridiculous bullshit kind of moves that you could possibly put onto a Pokemon. Excuse me, I'm in the middle of ranting. Let me in! I swear, as soon as this barrier is disengaged, I'm coming for your grunts. Good luck with that. This barrier isn't going down until we've completed our operation. There's no way you're getting in. Come on, Sir Raptor, there has to be another way onto the route. Maybe there's a secret underground passage in town. Let's go look around. So, Smurgle. <laughs> this one happened to have the moves Spore, Thunder, Nasty Plot, and Hurricane. Now, normally it's not too much of an issue if you're already like, you know, level 50 or so. When you have Pokemon that are all level 30 and can deal significant damage like that, it's not too much of an issue if you don't have the move Spore. That's locked behind like high levels when it comes to Pokemon being able to learn it while leveling up. Like Parasect, for example, doesn't learn it to like level 54, I think in Fire Red, Leaf Green. Um, Pokemon like Breloom, I think Breloom can learn it. Uh, learns it again at a really high level. Because it's 100% accuracy sleep, so your Pokemon can't do anything for several turns. And if you have to use a healing item on a Pokemon, like Gabite, for example, a Super Potion only heals 50 HP, so that's only half my health. If you have a move like Hurricane, which gets boosted from the rain, and you're pretty much chipping away half my health, every time I use a healing item, I don't get to get a plus one to the counter towards waking up. So I'm just locked into not being able to do anything but waste all my healing items. I was at 
10 super potions at the beginning of that fight and I had to use four of them just on Gabite alone trying to wake up. I don't really know why, again, I've mentioned this before, why do people just assume that high ridiculous moves on a Pokemon means high difficulty? It, it's not. It's, it just means you have to grind to get higher levels for no reason against like one trainer, for example. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just complaining about nothing. Mm -hmm. Like, isn't the whole point of a game to, like, fight trainers to level up your Pokemon? And occasionally some wild Pokemon to make sure that you can get some levels? Like, sure, I, I could have avo avoided him. I I wasn't 100% sure if he's a trainer or not. That's, that's something that's wrong with Fire Red and Leaf Green. Trainers that can walk around. <laughs> they, when you're used to them just walking in simple straight lines like this all the time, or just staying in one spot and rotating slowly, when they have free movement like this, that it throws you off. You think it's just an NPC, so you want to go talk to them. So that, that part's on me. I didn't have to fight him. And he is really close to the start of the town where you can go heal really quick. But again, it's just... I, th I, I It seems like these are excuses for the person that created the game. I, for the... How am I trying to phrase this? For whoever created the movesets for the Pokemon as you go through the game, it was just a reason for them to create a highly BS Pokemon. Yeah, I know it seems like I'm just wandering around. I'm actually trying to... Oh, it's right in front of me. I'm trying to find the Mart. Still no dude in here, but I'm going to top up those super potions because I had to use a bunch. Also, that said... I probably would have done a little bit better, probably not by much, I'd, if I didn't have Bronzor up front. If I could do some more damage with Bronzor, Black Sentence actually helped quite a bit. Spore missed a couple times, but yeah, having that 18 special attack is not very good. I, I'm, I know it's already finally level 30, but I think I'm actually going to end up going back and catching another Bronzor. Yeah, I'm going to end up doing that between this episode and next, so it's probably going to be another day before I upload again. But, I am going to have to go fix that. <laughs> I don't want to, but I I can't do anything if I don't have a Pokemon that can actually deal damage, you know? I, I'm guessing this is probably the direction I'm supposed to be going. QBT Expressway. The Underground Highway. Well, I know I didn't really do too much this episode. Except pick up an item. It's a big mushroom. And capturing whatever these things are. But we did make it to two new cities. Also, I'm not sure if you guys do want to see the battles on camera or not. I cut some of them out. Uh, pretty much anything that's not like mandatory battle, I cut out. And anything that's a boring battle, like... Sorry, Bronzor, but anything with you in it this episode probably is going to get cut. Because I don't think it's very interesting to watch somebody <laughs> use the same move about 30 times while spamming potions. But if you do like the videos, feel free to drop a like. If you dislike it, understandable. Feel free to drop a dislike. I saw that. Hello. Feel free to subscribe if you want to catch more. And I'll catch you guys in the next one where I go talk to these guys. Catch you then.